Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give God a great Resurrection Sunday praise. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God that he got up. Lord have mercy, Jesus. The grave could not hold him down. And he set the precedent for us going forward that no grave will hold us down. Hallelujah. We used to sing a song back in the day. Can't no grave hold my body down. Hallelujah. Thank God for his resurrection on today. Praise the Lord to each and every one of you. Amen, saints and friends. And we want to say welcome to the O'Fallon Apostolic Assembly, Spirit of Elijah Ministries. And to those of you who have joined our live stream, we are grateful that you logged on with us today. God has a special word that speaks to your need. Amen. And if this is your first time connecting with us, we offer you a very special welcome. And if you would like to converse with us, we would relish the opportunity to speak with you. And we ask that you would please provide us with your contact information via the email that is posted on your screen. And if you're here present in the sanctuary, we will have a connect team standing by in the overflow area to my right immediately following the service. And now, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we are prepared to hear a life-changing message from our very own Elder Derek Wayne King, a man who serves as our assistant pastor. We ask that you would stand to your feet at this time as I present to you the man of God for the hour, Elder King. Let us say amen from him as he comes in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. While you are standing, if you would be so kind to turn with me to St. Mark, 15th chapter. We're going to read a few verses there, and then we're going to turn to Acts 2. Amen. St. Mark, 15th chapter, and then Acts 2. While you're getting that, we certainly want to reverence the Lord on this morning. Amen. Thanking God for his many blessings, and thank God for our pastor. Uh, I believe he's here. Amen. And thank God for, amen, Bishop Wells this morning. Amen. Thank God for Lady Wells. Amen. Mother Wells. Amen. I often think about when Dana, my 29-year-old, was born. She was right there at the hospital. Amen. I'm running around excited and telling folks, strangers, and everybody <laughs> what's going on. And I believe she was in there with the wife. Amen. Doing what I probably should have been doing, trying to hold her hand or something. <laughs> Amen. But we thank God for her and Elder Phelps and his wife. Amen. And certainly thank God for my wife. And I don't want to stretch this out, but all of the saints of God, amen, in their respective place. And when you get a chance after service, congratulate uh, Sister King. Amen. And some of you probably wondering, well, what will she be? What did she do? Well, she won uh, the most beautiful lady contest. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. She, she won it over 35 years ago and been winning it every year since. <laughs> Amen. You might wonder well, how that happened. Well, I'm the sponsor. I host the show. And I'm the only judge whose votes matter. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we thank God. For Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Thank God for his precious blood. Now, if we would look at St. Mark, 15th chapter, verse number 25, where it reads, And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the subscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scriptures was fulfilled, which said, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads in saying, I want you to remember this word, ah. Ah, A-H, 
St. Mark was the only one recorded this word in his gospel. They was wagging their heads saying, ah, ah, as if, yeah, we showed him. Amen. Ah, look at him now. Thou that destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, he saved others. Himself he cannot save. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. Very quickly, Acts 2, verse number 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you. And ye yourselves also know him, being delivered by the determining counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Verse number 24, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death. Why? Because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. And all the people said, amen, amen. If you have your Bibles, hold them up very briefly and say, Lord, please bless Brother King to bless us through your word. In Jesus' name, and you may be seated. Amen. It was not possible that he should be holding of it because it was not possible that he should be holding of it because it was not possible. For a subject on this morning, I want to use the impossibilities of God. The impossibilities of God. Sub thought three things God can't do. Now, I know most of you probably shaking in your seats <laughs> because we've always been taught that there is nothing impossible for God to do. And you're quite right. We have one of the most profound teachers in these last days who have taught us well, some of us for many years. But when we think of the term impossible, we're dealing with something that's not able to occur, exist, or be done. It's unattainable. It's unworkable. Well, preacher, if you say that's the working definition, how is it that the God of all creation have some impossibilities? Well, if you pray for me, I'm going to help you. Amen. There are some things that's impossible for God to do. Amen. Now, I know some of these young preachers, they probably looking at me saying, well, we're going to light you up with some scriptures after church. <laughs> well, I have those same scriptures you probably want to use. Amen. To get some clarity on what I'm talking about. The first one, Mark 10, verse 23 through 27. Where Jesus looked around about. And said unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his word. But Jesus answered again, said unto them, children, how hard is it 
for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. The Lord said it is easier for a camel to go through the eyes of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who can then be saved? Verse number 27, and Jesus looking upon them said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. And I'm talking about the same God that Jesus just declared that with God everything is possible. But yet, there's three things God can't do. The impossibilities of God. Jesus was talking to these disciples and what Jesus was trying to teach them was that it's hard for a rich man to be saved. Amen. Because his riches might interfere with him having trust in God. Jesus was also teaching that, amen, that even though it's hard with man, that God can save anybody in everybody. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible. Amen. That's something that's sometimes it's hard for us to wrap our minds around, but all things are possible with God. That's what makes him God. But I want to talk to you about the impossibilities of God. Amen. Luke 1, 34 and 37 then said Mary unto the angels, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? In other words, Mary was declaring that I'm yet a virgin. But the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, Thy cousin Elizabeth, now li listen to this. She hath also conceived a son in her old age. Amen. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. First we find Jesus himself declaring that with God all things are possible. Now we see this angelic being saying that for with God nothing shall be impossible. How shall this be was what Mary asked, saying that I am a virgin. But the angel said that the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. By the way, amen, your cousin Elizabeth who is up in age and she's barren. She's already six months pregnant. Amen. Just for your information, Mary. So, amen. To encourage Mary, the angel told her that her aged cousin, who was barren, was already six months pregnant. Sometimes we need to hear a testimony about how God has delivered somebody else and how God has lifted him above a situation. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. But there's three things that God can't do. Amen. The impossibilities of God. Amen. Has to do with God in his deity and God in his perfection. Amen. To understand that all things are possible, we have to also understand that there are some impossibilities concerning God. Amen. You still got your Bibles? You didn't fold them up and put them up, did you? Because <laughs> this is a hard saying. Look with me at Hebrews 6. Verse 13 and 18, most of you have this scripture memorized, but you probably forgot it when you heard me say the impossibilities of God. And probably started scratching your head, but the Hebrew writer said, For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessings, I will bless thee. And multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater. 
and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the earth a promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Now I hope you're beginning to understand my speech when I say the impossibilities of God. Amen. The scriptures say that it is impossible for God to lie. Amen. There's no way, no how, no matter of pressure can make God tell a lie. In other words, if God has given you a promise, he's able to perform it because God cannot lie. Amen. If God said it, it's settled. Amen. Doesn't matter how crazy it sounds to the whole world. If God said it, it's settled. Why? Because it's impossible for God to lie. Amen. Acts 2, verse number 22 through 24. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Amen. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, signs, and wonders. And God did this in the midst of you. God did not work through Jesus in secret. Amen. But God wanted the whole world to see what Jesus was doing. But the Bible said that they delivered him to the determined counsel. And the foreknowledge of God ye have taken and with wicked hands have crucified and slain. And amen. You know the story how that they led him out to Calvary and hung him up on a cross. And amen. But the Bible said that God hath raised him up, having loosed the pains of death. Why in the world did God do this? Well, the Bible said that because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. In other words, there was no way possible, amen, that God was going to allow his only begotten son, amen, see corruption. Hallelujah to God. Jesus was the only man that ever walked the face of the earth, amen, and did it in perfection. He did it, the Bible said, that without sin. And so here it is now that these wicked men, they took him and they crucified him, hung him on a cross, and now they buried him, put him in a grave. But that was impossible for God to leave him in the grave. Now, I'm not talking about Jesus and his deity. I'm talking about him and his humanity. But there was no way possible that God was going to leave him there. He had to raise him up. Amen. It was impossible for God to leave Jesus because, amen, the Bible helps us to understand that Jesus had to taste death in hell for everybody. So it was impossible to leave Jesus in hell. It was impossible for God to let Jesus see corruption. And when we began to look at the text when they was hanging him on the cross and amen, folks walking by mocking him and amen, they placed a thorn, uh, a crown of thorn on his head and they persecuted him. And prior to that, they had whipped him 39 times, save one. And amen, the Bible said that it was not even coming to look upon him amen we would turn as it was our face from him because we didn't want to have anything to do with him but the bible said that one lady while she was walking by a man something in her spirit uh, caused her to use the term ah uh, Amen. Ah, look at him now. Ah, the same man, amen, that laid hands on the sick and the sick recovered. Ah, now look at him. Amen. The same man who spoke in the blinded eyes open. Amen. Ah, it's an explanation term that, amen, describing an emotion of feeling. Sometimes it has to do with, amen, sympathy or pleasure or being surprised. But I believe this woman was sanded in satisfaction. Amen. The priest was 
was saying it with satisfaction. In other words, they were saying, ah, oh, we finally got rid of this man. Amen. The one that came and turned the world upside down. Amen. Ah, oh, look at him now. He's defeated. Amen. He said he was the king of the Jews. But look at him now hanging on a cross. Amen. Ah, oh, look at him. Amen. He said he was going to tear his temper down and raise it up in three days. And now look at him hanging there helpless. Amen. I come to tell somebody today. Amen. Jesus was not there being speechless because he did not have power. He could have prayed and God would have sent down the legion of angels. Amen. But that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Amen. There are some things that's impossible for God. Amen. There was no way God was going to go back on his word. He said that he would send us a savior and that he would come and save us from our sins. He would pay the penalty. He would pay the price. Amen. The impossibility of God to leave us here forever. Amen. God cannot go back on his word. He's going to come back and get us one day. Amen. It was impossible for him to lie. It was impossible for him to let Jesus see corruption. And it's impossible for him to leave us here forever. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm so glad today that it's at least three things God cannot do. Amen. God cannot lie under pressure. Amen. I don't care who sits in the White House. I don't care who's running the Senate or Congress. What kind of laws are passed and things taken off the book. Amen. If God said it, amen, then it's J and amen because God cannot lie. It's impossible. Amen. For Jesus to be defeated. Amen. They walked by him hanging on the cross in dismay and thought for once we had finally got rid of this man. Amen. The priests and the scribes were sick of him. Amen. Even the Romans told the soldiers, when we put him in the grave, we need you to go down and make sure that this deceiver, they call him a deceiver, because we remembered something that he said. He said that in three days he was going to rise again. But we're going to shut this deceiver down. We're going to go and secure the tomb and put soldiers around it and make sure disciples don't come and take him out and say that he has risen from the dead. But I'm so glad that it's impossible for the grave to hold Jesus down. My God from glory. Amen brings me to my closing text in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 18. Remember the hope of the resurrection. Direction. Amen. If nothing else today, we should always remember that we have hope because of the resurrection. Because it was impossible for God to lie. It was impossible for Jesus to stay in the grave. It's impossible for him to leave us here forever. One day he's coming back for us. The Bible said that Paul began to tell the Thessalonians, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren concerning them which are asleep. In other words, it's okay to live to be of an old age. Amen. If we go by way of the grave, it's okay because it's impossible now for God to leave us here forever. The grave will not hold us down. Amen to God that you sorrow not even as others have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus uh, will God bring with him. Uh, amen. In other words, when God comes back, uh, he's not coming back by himself, uh, but all the saints that died before us. Uh, amen. He's bringing them back with him. Uh, we're going to meet them in the air. Um, uh, what a day, what a day that's going to be. Uh, hallelujah, Mother Wells. Uh, amen. We're going to see the whole saints of Zion. Uh, amen. The forefathers of the P.A. W will be there. 
my God, hallelujah, for this we say unto you, uh, by the words of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain uh, until the coming of the Lord should not prevent them which are asleep. Uh, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, uh, with the voice of an archangel. In other words, Jesus is coming himself. Uh, he's not sending Michael for this job. Um, he's not going to send Gabriel to do this task. Uh, but the Lord Jesus himself self is coming. He would not leave us here forever. He's going to shout with the voice of an archangel. The trump in God and the dead in Christ is going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, we shall be caught up together. In other words, it's impossible for him to leave us here. Hallelujah to God. It's impossible. For him to leave us here forever. It doesn't matter what the crime rate gets up to. Uh, amen. Hallelujah to God. Some of us might go in a tragic death. Uh, but nevertheless, it's impossible for him to leave us here. Some of us might go to the grave and the wood worms might eat of our flesh. Uh, hallelujah to God. But the Bible said that it's still impossible uh, for him to leave us here forever. Hallelujah. Because of the resurrection, amen, the impossibilities of God. It's impossible for him to lie. I don't care who threatened him. It's impossible for God to tell a lie. So be careful when somebody says, well, God said Remember, it's impossible for God to ever, ever, ever tell a lie. Amen. It's impossible. It's impossible for Jesus to be defeated. I don't care what kind of crazy movies they make about him. I don't care what the gangsayers say about him. It's impossible for Jesus to to be defeated. The Bible said he was approved of God by the foreknowledge of God. And they crucified him, hung him on a tree, put him in a grave. But it was impossible for him to stay in the grave. And because of those impossibilities, now it's impossible. But those of us who trust in this God, who live of right and believe in his word, it's impossible for God to leave us here forever. It ain't going to happen. It, ain't go it can't happen because it'll make the first impossibility void. He cannot lie. He said, no. I go and prepare a place for you that where I am that ye may be there also he's coming back for us the impossibilities of God it's impossible for him to lie it's tax season some of us got to go look that tax person in the face and when she called out that bottom number, some, 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 sometime now, some of the saints, we might say, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Is it anything possible we can do to get that number changed on the bottom? You know the one where it say you owe the IRS? <laughs> That's pressure. That's pressure. And sometimes we have to pray our strength in the Holy Ghost. Because we be wanting to make up something. Take that pressure up off of us. <laughs> but even under pressure, it's impossible for God to lie. Amen. Impossible for Jesus to be defeated. And it's impossible because of the resurrection to leave us here forever. He's coming back, thanks of God. Hang on. Keep living holy. Keep trusting in God. Amen. The impossibilities of Christ. Amen. Three things he'll never do. 
Never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Lo, he's with us even unto the ends of the world. Amen. Perhaps there's one in the house today who is not saved and you want to be saved. Amen. We're going to ask if you would come at this time. Well, raise your hand. Amen. Right there at your seat. Anyone who isn't saved, you want to be saved, you raise your hand. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Anybody just want prayer? Likewise, raise your hand. Amen. At your seat there, we're going to pray with you then. Amen. We're going to trust God to do whatever it is you need to be done in your life. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you even now for your many blessings. We thank you for how you continue to watch over us. Bless us. Keep us, oh God. We pray now, Lord, for those dear saints who raised their hands. We pray, Lord, that you would meet them right where they are. Meet every need, oh God. Touch their bodies, Lord. Those that need to be touched. Set free, oh God, those that are in captivity. Heal, Lord, and deliver and set free. Make them whole, we pray. Father, we pray even now that you would help us, O God, to hide your word in our hearts, that we may never sin against thee. Bless every precious soul in the house today, and we thank you, Lord, for what you did on Calvary. We thank you, O God, for how you rose from the dead. And Father, we thank you for how you sent back your Holy Spirit to cause us to be witnesses for you. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen. At this time, amen, we're going to put you over into the hands of Elder Phelps. Amen. He might lead us in the Father and the Servant. 